fishing for money, dreams of Bentleys and Ferraris and floors by the biggest ballers. Now bitches wanna call us. Picture me with all the cheese, matches looking overseas, pushing limousines and stacking hundreds of G's. Dubs on my sports car, six car garages like a mirage. When you step off in my backyard, rollies wild. All right, y'all. What's good, man? We're here to talk UFC 133. Uh, sorry I didn't post a video last night, but uh, just to keep it real, I was tired and I'm off. Of. That's just the way it goes. Most of y'all know King JB, MMA King. I'm doing what I always do. Uh, a couple things I'm going to get into. I'm also going to be posting another video on Rashad Evans here shortly. Uh, so make sure y'all check both of them out. Big ups to all my sponsors. Uh, uh, Fugar Fight Gear, Inner B Sportswear, MMA Fit Club. Uh, Gorilla MMA, make sure y'all fuck with them. Gorilla MMA. Uh, MMAMadhouse.com. Big thanks to MMAMadhouse.com. They helped me, uh, they helped me get the, uh, wet, the new website launched and get everything going. I appreciate everything you do, Carl, over there at MMAMadhouse.com. Uh, make sure y'all, uh, just big ups to everybody, man. If I forgot to, I apologize. I love all my sponsors. I thank you all very, very much. Uh, now as we proceed, we're gonna go ahead and get off into this, uh, this, uh, Shit, this uh, UFC 133, you know what time it is. Anyway, sorry man, I just woke up, I'm just having my morning coffee as y'all know. Uh, basically just chilling right now, man. Uh, so, uh, if I'm a little groggy, and I seem a little groggy, I apologize, <laughs> you know how it goes. But uh, anyway, UFC 133, man, I, I have to say that I'm definitely uh, impressed with what we saw. Uh, let's be real. With all these injuries, we really thought UFC 133 was going to be dirt, just dirt, and it wasn't. Uh, <clears throat> now, I mean, the undercard, we didn't see any. We only saw one finish, which the finish actually surprised me. But <clears throat> the undercard, we saw a lot of fight of the night uh, type fights. And so uh, I'm going to get into that right now, actually. Uh, the, the night started off with Rafael Natal uh, against Paul Bradley. It was a great fight, actually. Uh, Paul Bradley, unfortunately, though, with, with Paul, it seemed he seemed like he just wasn't ready for the big time. You know what I'm saying? He he's got a hell of a talent, hell of a record. He's got great wrestling. Uh, but I scored this fight 29-28 for Natal. Uh, Bradley looked like he gassed at some point. Uh, you know he got his takedowns, but he didn't do any any damage. Natal, on the other hand, was nailing them leg kicks. Just tore his ass up with leg kicks. It was just a, a good performance all around. Uh, I originally picked Bradley to win, uh, but Natal got the win. So it started my night off 0-1 on predictions, but definitely. One judge gave it to Natal 30-27. to I was a little kind of, yeah, I don't know about that. But it is what it is. <clears throat> Let's see. Mike Brown and Nam Fan. Mike Brown dominated Nam Fan in round one. I gave, it a, I gave him a 10-8 round in round one. It was a total domination. No question about it. Um, I just couldn't believe it, actually. Took him down and just beat his face in, actually. Uh, Fan got round two. I think he looked a lot better in round two. Round three, they both came out swinging. Uh, I think they both knew they needed the round. Uh, I gave the round to, to Brown. Nam Fan could have at least made it a little bit interesting and got a draw by taking the round, but he didn't. Um, so, and Mike Brown in the end won it 29-28. Uh, you know, on most people's cards. Uh, but I gave it 29-27, and one, one, one judge agreed with me. It was kind of weird that two people did not give him a 10-8 on, on the first round. But, you know, shit happens. It is what it is. Now, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Johnny Hendricks and Mike Pierce in the welterweight division. Uh, definitely a great fight. Uh, Hendricks, a lot of people think that uh, Hendricks was, uh, that Mike Pierce was screwed. It was a split decision. It was a very close fight. I scored the fight 29-28 uh, uh, for uh, Mike Pierce. I think he came on strong in the third and second. Uh, Johnny Hendricks, now, his striking was amazing, though. Uh, Johnny Hendricks has definitely improved his striking uh, without a shadow of a doubt. He looks very good out there. So, uh, you know, big ups to Johnny Hendricks. I think that uh, he's got what it takes to, to, to be a true force in the welterweight division, and so does Mike Pierce. Uh, definitely a good fight. My prediction wreck dropped to one and two in this fight, which pissed me off. Uh, next up in the bantamweight division, Ivan Minjavar and Nick Pace. Uh, Minjavar got the decision. I um, I actually gave it to Pace, 29-28. It was an even fight going into the third round. Uh, Nick Pace busted Minjavar in the eye up with a knee. And I'm sorry, but in MMA, I give people points for damage. You know what I'm saying? I don't know 
how many of you guys do or do not, but you bust somebody's fucking eye open and they're running around the cage to get the fuck away from you, you won the fight. That's just how it is in real life. You bust my eye open and I'm running from you, you're the winner of that fight. That's just the truth. What kind of coffee cup is this? Is this a little mermaid coffee cup? Uh, possibly a lassie coffee cup? Guess we'll find out in due time. Now, as we proceed, uh, <laughs> Chad Mendez, he uh, fought Ronnie Yaya. Ronnie Yaya looked like shit. Ronnie Yaya striking looked like shit and awkward, and he just looked like shit. Chad Mendez even dove down into his guard in the third round, and Yaya just basically um, gave him an open guard, and he just he looked like shit. Period. Ronnie Yaya, I'm a big fan of his work. I think he's uh, much like Danny and Maya in terms of being. One of the best jiu-jitsu practitioners on the planet. I don't know, though, because Damian Maya would have tapped his ass out. Chad Mendez would have damn near died in Damian Maya's guard. But Chad Mendez earned a fan with me last night. Uh, he dominated the fight. Yeah, he fought a smart fight. Uh, didn't even didn't even decide, didn't even use his wrestling as much as I thought he would. You know what I'm saying? Because he wanted to strike, and which was smart with a guy not like Ronnie Yaya. Yanni Yaya, however the fuck you say I know the R it doesn't exist in Brazil or whatever the fuck. But anyway. Alright, now, light heavyweight title. Not, not title, but light heavyweight prelim. Uh, Matt Hamill and Gustafsson. Woo! Alexander Gustafsson kicked that ass. But let me make this clear. Never wear them fucking shorts again. And tall, lengthy people should not wear shorts like that, man. Because there's no thighs to compress against the bulge. And so all we saw was a fucking bulge, man. And it made me it made me it made me sick, man. I threw I was eating chips and salsa and it actually made me damn near regurgitate my chips and salsa. And anyone that knows King J B knows I like my chips and salsa. So uh, Alexander Gustafsson, you're a new parent friend on Facebook, let me make it clear. I like what you do. Do not wear them shorts anymore. Speaking of shorts, Dennis Harmon, don't you wear them shorts anymore either. And Brian Ebersaw, you guys creeped me out last night. Brian Ebersaw, do not shave your chest hair like that. And Akiyama, even though you always use that music, and I and I know that, your music still creeps me the fuck out. Um, yes, I'm a pride guy, no question about it, in terms of uh, uh, pride fighting championship, not gay pride. Um, but I, I was definitely creeped out by a lot of things last night. Seeing Ortiz drop by a knee to the chest, which I'll get into later, creeped, that also creeped me out. Uh, Akiyama face down on the, I man, a lot of shit creeped me out, but I'll get to that momentarily. Okay, but the bottom line is Alexander Gustafsson, TKO, second round, first stoppage of the night. Uh, he, he, he dominated Matt Hamill, that's just true. If anybody sees it any other way, you're, you're pretty much high. Uh, Roy McDonald versus Mike Pyle. Roy McDonald, once again, I'm telling you now, Roy McDonald is a future champion in that division. How anyone can say otherwise is out their fucking mind. He dominated Carlos Condit. And granted, he lost that fight. He definitely dominated Nate Diaz. He made Nick Diaz look like some little girl, man. Just slammed him all over the place like it was a domestic battle. Seriously, that's what it looked like. Same thing last night with Mike Powell. He just dominated Mike Powell, period. And Mike Powell ain't no joke. So, big ups to... um. Roy McDonald, he's a future champion. Jorge Rivera, Constantinos Filippo, Filippo, whatever. Filippo pissed me off. This was supposed to be a stand-up war. Filippo uh, decided to go for a shoot right off the jump, tried to clinch shit against the cage. I wasn't real happy. Uh, at the end of the night in this fight, Filippo uh, won a split decision. I also scored this to 29-28 to Filippo. I can't believe anyone actually scored it for Jorge Rivera. It just doesn't make no sense. Rivera did not, um, I mean, he did not impress anybody at all. So I don't understand why he, he got that. I, 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 it's a shame that if this is Rivera's last fight, I feel kind of bad for him because he won the bang and Filippo just uh, did what I would expect from anyone named Filippo. Just keep it around. Now, moving on. Dennis Harmon and Brian Eversaw, like I said, that whole fight creeped me out. Uh, just in the way uh, Harmon wore them Speedos and Brian Ebersaw shaved his chest hair a certain way. It was kind of weird. Uh, I didn't really like watching the fight at all. Uh, but Ebersaw got the TKO, and it was a strong comeback because 
uh, Harmon just rushed in, and I thought he was going to tap him out like he did Matt Hughes in seconds. But he didn't. You know what I mean? And that's just the truth. I ever saw uh, busted his face open with his elbows and just looked good, man. Big up to Brian Ebersaw, man. He looked real good. Except for that chest tear. You need to do something about that. Uh, Vitor Belfort in the middleweight belt with Yoshihiro Akiyama. Boy, this was my pissed off moment of the night. Because my computer crashed. Now y'all know I stream my shit. You know, very rarely do I, uh, uh, very rarely do I hit this, uh, uh, button on my cable to go ahead and order this shit. Uh, very rarely. So, anyway, my computer crashed, as I was getting back to. My computer crashed, and I did not get to see the knockout. I still have not seen the knockout. I will, uh, obviously YouTube it today, and I'll see the knockout. But from what, when I, when I did fire back up the computer, all I saw was Akiyama face down. Um, and that was some spooky shit. You know what I'm saying? I was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? I, then they, they should have kicked on Akiyama's music right then. Because that would have been some funny shit. But anyway, big up to Akiyama. Goodbye, Akiyama. You didn't quite uh, cut it in the UFC. I'm sure you'll be released today or sometime soon. People think you're going to be dropped to the 170. No. You lost three in a row. Uh, 170 stack. You're gone. Man. I don't see you dropping anything other than, uh, you know, dropping your bags back off in Japan as you enter back home and, and get back into some, maybe some dream uh, fighting over there. That's just my personal thing. Big up to Akiyama, though. I appreciate what you do. <laughs> now, moving on to the main event. Tito and Rashad. Uh, I'm going to get into my next video here in a minute about Rashad. Thank you, Juice. Yeah, I said it. Uh, Tito almost finished him with a guillotine. I really wish he would have because I hate Rashad Evans. I do like him against John Jones just because I hate John Jones. But uh, just keeping it real, I, I, I really was sad to see Tito lose. But Tito, look, both of these guys look ready to go. Tito looked like he wanted it. Rashad looked like he wanted it. Tito just couldn't. In two weeks notice, he just couldn't do it. Rashad, though, didn't he look extraordinarily strong to you? Since when can he pick Tito up over his head? He couldn't before, and I know you guys are going to say it's four years ago. I'm about to get into that here in my next video. Uh, four years, yeah, you can build a lot, man, but uh, even against Rampage, he wasn't that strong. Let's just be real. You know what I mean? T Rashad looked extraordinarily strong last night. We'll see. But remember, mark my words. You heard it here first. Rashad Evans is going to touch the positive for HGH or something. Uh, based on this camp for this Tito fight. We'll see. Because remember, he was originally training for John Jones and Phil Davis, who are muscular. Just And, and granted, Tito, Tito's strong as fuck, too. I think Rashad knew that. He was fighting all big, strong beasts, and he had the juice. He just had to do it. But anyway, that's my take on UFC 133. A lot better than what we expected. Uh, my Rashad video will be coming up shortly. Big ups to everybody out there that supports the kingdom. Love y'all, man. I'm out for